I've got Avery Colburn on the phone with me now and we're trying out this neat way that maybe you guys can join in in the conversation. So you've created what you call is the open P, yep. the open gauge for powered paragliding. Why did you decide to call this device open gauge? Uh, the first word open really just means open source. Um, I almost called it the PPG gauge and then I realized you can use this in any form of flying. Of course, I'm wanting to get into paramotors myself, so that's what I centered it around, but it's completely open source, so it's available to anyone for free. Uh, you can download it, you can build your own, uh, there's 3D printed files out there, you can make it yourself, um, and I, I give that out freely so that anyone can make their own. You got the idea to call it Open Gauge because it's an open source design that you created, accessible right, to yeah, anybody, Anyone right? can modify it or build their own straight off the plans that are out there for free. <laughs> well, not well, anyone. It's not like I know how to make this stuff, but for individuals like yourself, and, and I know that there are a lot more individuals within the paramotor community who are also into flying drones or RC aircraft, sure. and that usually comes with building things. How complex is it to build one of these open gauges? Like what, what sort of skill set do you need to have to be able to pull it off? Well, so the, the case is 3D printed. Um, I guess that's the, the biggest holdback. Uh, 3D printers have come a long ways and a lot of people have them. And if you don't have one, you probably can get in touch with somebody who does, who can make them for you. But that's, that's the, the first prerequisite. You have to be able to make the case and it's 3D printed. Um, then the electronics, you can buy them. Um, actually, I get all of my stuff from Adafruit, which is a New York-based company. Um, they make electronics. And uh, you, if you can solder and you can 3D print your own case, you can put one of these together. It's pretty easy. Soldering is, is you know, takes a lot of practice, right? Yeah, I mean, well, more... good soldering does. But I mean, you know, you just have to get the wires to connect. It's it, whatever works. What I find what I find interesting is is you're probably pretty humble. You you work in uh, you, you work with remote control devices, RC stuff, like vocationally, right? Yeah, like that's part, yeah. That's one of the jobs you do. Yeah, I work in a hobby store. Is this something that you're going to sell? Yeah, actually, I, I am now. Um, right. I, I don't really have a, a store for it. Um, you can go to the website open-gauge.com and shoot me an email and I can send you a PayPal invoice. Um, right on. The mini version, the, the version one that you have, uh, is 190. That's built, assembled, shipped to you, everything ready to go. Right. So included in this, <laughs> I don't know, it seems so advanced to me, I want to call it a flight computer because I got to test flight. I got to go take it on my last couple flights and I thought it was really neat. And it, it was a lot more accurate, I think, because there's actually a barometer built into it yeah. as opposed to just GPS, right. which is huge because that was one of the questions I was going to pose to you was why wouldn't somebody just use one of the like the Fly Sky High app or, or one of these other apps that, that I've used in the past over the years that that worked relatively well and, and it gives you that visual display as far as tracking goes however um, it doesn't show me my AGL or my my above ground level sure it, or, or at least it doesn't do it accurately and it doesn't it, it's it's very delayed so I wonder if this sort of device could be um, really ideal for let's say for example somebody who's trying to be very strict at maintaining a specific altitude with their paramotor or just trying to assess when they hit a thermal for example and yeah. able to see those subtle climb rates that aren't portrayed at least not instantaneously there's a, a pretty big delay on most um, GPS device, like exclusively GPS-based devices, right? Yeah, it's it's not so much a, a delay as it is a, a processing uh, hitch. So in the open gauge, there's a one and a half second, I guess it is a delay, um, from when information is received from the satellites to when it is sorted out. It's actually spelled out. And it's called an NEMA sentence. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just gibberish, and <laughs> the the Arduino, the small microcomputer on there, uh, sorts it out. And in that information is your speed, your altitude, your heading, your longitude and latitude, and some other stuff. Um, and that's that's where you're getting that that lag from. But yeah, I I built this because when I was looking into paramotors, I'm I'm the kind of person who needs to know about what they're doing. Not necessarily that you know you need instruments, but I felt like I just I wanted to know how high I was, how fast I was, that kind of thing. And, right. and there's there's other things out there on the market. You know, there's GPS watches, but and they start at four hundred dollars. And the right. the open gauge mini 
parts cost just over a hundred. Um, and yeah, like you said, it's a lot more accurate than just a GPS app on your phone, and you're not going to drop your phone uh, just from pinching it while you take it out right. of your pocket. <laughs> no, that's a super good point. That's a super good point because yeah, uh, to to pull your phone out and try and monitor your flight. Well, I mean, especially while you're a new pilot, it's probably not recommended uh, because you should be focusing on the task at hand. Sure. When I was using the open gauge that you sent me, I got to go fly, and and it kind of looked like I could either put it on my forearm, like maybe as a watch mm -hmm. uh, in a way, or you suggested, or well, I think you designed it so that it could be placed on the thigh. Yeah. And that worked out like super well because I never, you know, stopped to think, oh man, there's this thing down on my leg. However, I got to keep my hands on the controls at, at all times. <laughs> Good thing there's no like sky police, right? Because I'd be <laughs> yeah. pulled over for always using my phone while flying. Um, but it's not. It's only a matter of time before I either drop the phone and God forbid you drop your phone while flying. It could go back into the repeller. Oh, God, yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot that could go wrong. So I do think that, especially for individuals who are new to the sport, that being able to have a device that's strapped to your leg that provides you uh, gra you know, accurate ground speed, um, a much more accurate climb rate, like the variometers on, on the phone devices are not very, not very accurate. Yeah, they're not. I know that... Right. The the GPS technology right. um, at its absolute best with ten satellites locked on, you can get accurate with about ten feet left and right, forward and backward. But vertically, it's more like twenty, thirty feet, um, and right. that's that's not good enough really for trying to maintain level level flight. You need pressure based. Uh, the right. the chip that I'm using uh, is accurate to sixty six centimeters. So you can put it over your head and then you know put it down on the floor and it will measure five foot change. Yeah, I noticed. I well, I noticed it said two feet when I when I had it strapped to my leg. Yeah. So like when I so the procedure was like you you said in this <laughs> that, that you sent me <laughs> long printout. I got to the field. I turned it on. I allowed it to acquire as many satellites as possible. I it, where I'm at, I was able to acquire nine. You said in your manual like six or more is sufficient. I suppose right. Yeah, ideal. Right, ideal. Yeah, and. And so it acquired the nine. I pushed and held the only red button on this device, which <laughs> set the home point. I mean, as far as simple goes, it's really simple. It could have been simple gauge, or, you know, along with yeah. open gauge. It's 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 very easy to use, and the information is just what you need, and, and not really more than that, which is good because when you're flying, once again, you don't need to be distracted with everything else on the screen that might be bright and colorful. Just to have the information you want right there in front of you is really nice. Now, let's let's talk really quickly about, uh, or as, as long as you want, because this is just so cool to me. Sure. The idea of of the of the next version that you're going to be creating. Which oh yeah is uh, okay okay so let me okay well, so i'm gonna let you of course introduce it like it's so cool yeah well i've actually got i've got two different versions coming up um uh, one of them is just the barometer so just your altitude mm -hmm. and climb rate really small it's actually about the size of a watch and it will go on your wrist um, for the people who only want that and it's going to be a lot faster i'm sure you saw while you were flying uh it's about a two second delay between screen refreshes this one you're gonna be i mean almost instantaneous you know like half a second between refreshes um so that's that's coming up first because it's a lot easier uh, but right. version version two I'm hoping to get sorted out soon. It's kind of hard to do when I don't own a paramotor um, to try to figure out some of these <laughs> technologies. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, version version two most importantly will have uh, ground wind indication. So there's there's going to be a separate base station that stays on the ground with a weather vane and wirelessly right. sends about a mile range um, ground ground wind. So as you're coming back to land, you know which way the wind's blowing and how hard it's blowing. Um, the right. the anemometer it's a hot wire anemometer like a car um, mass airflow sensor it's very mm -hmm. accurate I mean it could feel you breathe across the room so uh, it'll be super <laughs> super accurate and uh, hopefully that will that will help a lot uh, and then it'll also do right. some other things I know it's got is going to have cylinder head temperature um, does all of the GPS and barometer functions version one does right now it should have uh, fuel level and how quickly you're using fuel and kind of like your range you know how much longer you can fly at a certain throttle setting 
Um, and then fingers crossed RPM. I've still got to iron that out. <laughs> I know it's possible. I just don't know how these tachometers do it. I'm going to figure it out. So uh, I, I want everybody to kind of like imagine for a second being able to fly a paramotor with access to all of the information that other aircraft may more commonly have. I mean, we as paramotorists don't generally contact the tower for a readout on the wind direction. So, of course, flying paramotors were extremely subject to the weather, right? Yeah. The wind is, is one of those make or break deals when it comes to flying. And even if it's a flyable day, the better you, you can understand the wind, uh, the better you may be prepared to 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 come in and take off or or come come in for a landing whatever it may be right. now what's really cool about this this design you know assuming you pull it off which i think you're going to <laughs> I, like i should I, be able it, to i've got most of it done I know, already i know but i don't want to get my hopes of like too much i i'm i'm sure you are but the the coolest thing about it is that if you if you look at your forecast on on windy, uh, which is the app that I use to to find out what the what is happening with the wind at the moment, most I guess most accurately at the field, this device isn't like um, giving you just the general area. This is giving you specific information to where you're going to be landing, which yeah. is like the only information that matters. Right. So. So, it's, yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a wireless so windsock, cool. basically. A wireless windsock. Not to replace a windsock. You could certainly have a windsock out there, too, but um, oh, right. you can't see a windsock from a mile away. It's kind of hard to right. set up an approach. Uh, you know, so that, that was the plan, at least, and it's kind of ballooned from there. I just keep taking suggestions from people in the community. I've got to take suggestions because I don't fly yet, so I've got to find out what other people need, and that's, that's how it's kept progressing. Would you be open to suggestions from, from the viewers in the oh, comments please. section? Oh, please. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way I've been able to do what I've done. Um, it started right. out only GPS. And then I had somebody tell me, hey, GPS you know, variometer is not accurate enough. I need better. And then uh, I had right. another guy tell me, it'd be nice if I could have battery percentage. I'm sure you noticed you know, when you press that red button, you get battery percentage. It's, it's right. all community fed. You know, I've, right. I've got the general idea, but I, I can add as much as I need to to help everybody else. And, uh, and you mentioned uh, the technology that, that you, for, for, for being able to monitor your fuel level, <laughs> it was some sort of an interesting, what is it? How, how is so it that you would be able to? It's, it's basically, a, it, it's pretty small. It's uh, probably about the size, a little smaller than your palm, but it's a, mm. it's a small turbine with a magnet on it. And uh, it's called a Hall Effect sensor that sits right next to the magnet, and it basically just counts every time the magnet passes. So you flow fuel through that little turbine, uh, and it, it counts how fast you're using fuel. And from that, we can do the math. Uh, if we know what fuel you started <laughs> with, how much fuel you've used, how much you're using, you know, liters per hour, um, what's left in the tank, that kind of thing. So that's really exciting, right. too. Wow. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely nuts, especially for an individual like myself who's had uh, a few a few instances where I've ran out of fuel. Um, yeah. it, you know, currently my my gauge is by pulling out my cell phone and then just oh, yeah. Well, the like using, yeah, you're seeing the reflection. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, that is that is so cool, Avery. I'm I'm super glad that you sent it out to me. Um, I think that this is going to be sought after by a lot of people. Um, if you are anything like me, I think it's it's absolutely worth the cost to, to get a device. I've actually got it <laughs> up on the shelf right now, like just looking at it. Uh, and, and then I'm going to uh, part ways so long and send it back to you so long as you let me borrow that Windfinder one when it comes out. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, when it comes out, you'll be the first to get it. <laughs> yeah. sure. um, no, super cool, man. Um, is there anything else that you want to say to, to the viewers? Um, suggestions. Really just what would you want in a gauge that you could use while you're in the air? Right. Cause I'm not in the air. I don't know. Um, my parents are balloon pilots and most of what I'm doing has nothing to do with balloons. Right. So, uh, keep, keep hitting up with suggestions in the comments here. Um, and I'll keep checking them and we'll add as much as we can to these little itty bitty computers. Right on dude. That's super exciting. Avery, thank you so much for, <laughs> 
doing all of this. This whole elaborate sure. setup yeah. took like a really long time to try and make it presentable for our community. Uh, and and your, or your feedback is super appreciated as well. All right, I didn't actually film an outro for this video. So if you guys did enjoy it, you can simply help out this channel by leaving it a like, subscribe to the channel, and you can help simply by sharing this video or, or the Paramotor podcast or, or other people's videos. Honestly, share share Paramotor Nation, share Paragliding Talk with Robert Michaels and Giles Fowler. There are so many great people. Uh, speaking of which, um, hold on one second. I'm a huge fan, kind of nerdy fan of the Zelda franchise. And, and I told him that as a child, uh, when I was a kid, Playing Zelda was the number one game in the world. Cheesy, I know. But he was super kind and he sent me out the, not just this game, but the Nintendo 64 and, and extra controllers to borrow. Thank you to Drew. I will see you guys in the next one.